Hey everybody, welcome to this video about trail cameras and bear baits. I'm going to talk to you about how to really use trail cameras effectively at your bear baits and learn the most that you can from those cameras and also how to protect them from bears and thieves and all that. You are on the number one channel on YouTube for bear hunting information. So if you're a bear hunter and you're not a subscriber, well, that wouldn't make any sense, would it? So hit the subscribe button. So let's talk about trail cameras here today. And uh, 20 years of bear baiting experience has taught me an awful lot about trail cameras. And I've learned so much about bears and bear behavior because of trail cameras. They've changed so much over the years. Back in the day, people were like throwing flour around their bear baits to try to get a picture of a track where they'd get the flour on their feet and then walk on someplace where they could get a good photo of a track and then uh, they also I know a guy that carried five gallon buckets of fine sand into his bear baits and spread it around uh, trying to get a track of a bear to kind of see what how, what size of a bear was coming to his bait. Um, other times people would like hang something up uh, at six or seven feet high and see if the bear could pull it down. Then they'd know they'd had a big bear on the bait and maybe you were looking at bark, trying to find a uh, hair or two and see if you got a color phase bear on your bait. Well, that was just not, I mean, compared to what we have today, holy smokes, that was horrible. Um, but along in the, I guess it was the early 90s, uh, we got these things called string trackers where uh, a lot of you people have never seen them probably, but they're a little device that had a digital clock on it and then had a string attached to it and you could run it across a trail and then when something would walk through, they'd hit that piece of thread, it would trip the clock and you'd know what time something came to your bait. You didn't know what it was. It could have been a deer or raccoons or whatever, but at least you knew what time something was coming to the bait. Well, those days fortunately are gone. Back in the late 1990s I got my first trail cameras and they were film trail cameras and they started to really change things for me. Now the first ones were a real struggle because you know you put 36 a uh, roll of 36 film in there you know and then you had to I had to drive 45 minutes to a Walmart and then stand there for an hour while they did the one hour developing and then I'd get the pictures and I'd be like raccoon 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 squirrel crow and you know maybe I'd be lucky and get a couple pictures of bears out of the whole th roll of 36. So that wasn't much better, but at least you got to see the animals that were out your bait and you actually knew what time they were there. Well, the advent of digital trail cameras really changed that. And now we've even advanced into cellular trail cameras. I'll talk about that in a minute. But the digital trail cameras are amazing. The really good quality cameras these days take really good photos. They have high megapixel count and they also have good lens and sensor. And don't get too caught up in megapixel because that just means that's the size of your picture, which is you know partially important. But you can have a camera with a really poor quality lens and sensor with that's 20 megapixels or something. And and so with a poor quality lens and sensor, you don't have a very good picture. But 20 megapixels now you just got a really big picture that's not very good. So you know don't get too caught up in megapixels. What's more important is is getting a camera with a good lens and a good sensor so it takes good quality pictures. This is the Covert Black Maverick. They also make a Red Maverick which has uh, IR flash. This is a black flash. This is the camera that I almost exclusively use now on the bear baits because it is a good uh, quality lens and sensor it takes great photos for the price. It's a nice balance between uh, uh, the price. This is about a $150 camera. And uh, it also takes HD videos, which is really cool. And it, you can, there's a lot of different ways that you can set it. Uh, I usually set the camera on bare baits so that it'll take a photo and then start the video. It's got that setting. So it takes one picture and then rolls with the video. And I'll set the either 30 or 45 second videos, depending on how how many bears are coming in, how big the SD card is and so forth and how often I'm going to be able to check this camera because man you can fill up the cards in a hurry. Um, I usually set on either three or five minute intervals unless I don't have very many bears coming to a particular bait. So if the bears are coming in and all, all the time you're just going to have way more than you want to sit there and watch. But the uh, three to five minute intervals with one picture and then a 30 to 45 second video seems to work out pretty good for me. So that's what I normally do on these and I really like that. 
Uh, I'm protecting these cameras in a bear safe box. And interestingly, when I first started bear hunting, uh, I just didn't have problems very much with the bears chewing on my cameras or tearing them off the tree or whatever. Early in my learning curve of understanding how to really bring bears to a bait, especially how to bring them to a bait in the daylight. And uh, I just noticed that I'd get a lot of pictures of bears that were just at the bait. They'd take, they'd feed for a little bit and then they'd leave. And uh, I, I got that a lot. And a lot of it was nocturnal activity and so forth. Well, the cameras helped me learn how to create an environment where the bears felt comfortable and felt safe so they would come in uh, during the daylight first of all and secondly so that they would spend more time there so I wouldn't have known that except for the trail cameras and especially using video and watching their body language and how they reacted and so forth so as I learned more and more about how to locate my baits and how to create an environment um, where I didn't have the human intrusion that causes these bears to kind of be on edge and I created a comfortable environment where they liked to come to the bait and they felt good about spending some time there I started getting pictures of bears that were just kind of lounging around the bait site they'd just be you know I mean me I'd see them there laying on their back with their feet in the air and they just kind of be curled up in a ball sometimes and I realized that I was now finally creating an environment where these bears really felt comfortable there well that created a new problem is because when those bears are there longer and they're just kind of hanging out next thing you know they look over and they go what's that hanging on that tree over there and pretty soon your cameras have teeth marks punched through them and they're on the ground and a couple of cameras that were gone i don't know if the bears took them or somebody else stole them even so i went with the bear safe boxes now and i just put a lock on them and it it would take a great deal of effort for anyone to steal it and the bears absolutely can't do anything with them at all so that's all my cameras are in bear safe boxes now <clears throat> okay the next step that has really been revealing to me is the new cell phone scouting cameras now this is a covert Blackhawk and this is a Verizon camera they also have one for AT&T and it's amazing that it can send you pictures instantly when it takes a picture it texts it to you and you can have it you can set it so it texts or email the picture to it all all you have to do is be in a spot where you have cell phone service and that's that's all that's necessary and you hook this up and originally the first cell phone cameras they were really super expensive in the plans you had to buy a separate cell phone plan for each camera nowadays like this Blackhawk it's $11.99 a month and you can turn it on and off whenever you want if you're going to use it for a month you just turn the billing on and they bill you the $11.99 I believe it is and if you have more of them the additional ones are $7.99 a month so um, it, you know for under $20 a month you can run two and then when you're not using it you just turn it off I use it of course for deer hunting I use them a lot almost year-round but um, so these have changed a lot and you know right when there's a bear on your bait and you can really pattern them because it's like oh it's you know two hours before dark and there's a bear on my bait right now you know there's been times when I've been sitting there and I was sitting in a tree stand and boom I got a picture of a bear on a different bait um, so sometimes maybe you're better off not knowing I don't know so I've even put this camera in a staging area I guess I like to call them as sometimes a bigger mature male bears will hang up before they come to a bait um, and you know in the daylight maybe darkness is coming and they'll they'll sit back in an area that's that you can't see but they can just kind of smell and observe and listen and so forth and they'll sit there for a little bit um, you could put these cameras in a staging area you'll get a text that tells you that there's a bear sitting there and he's getting ready to come in so um, the information that these things have provided have just been terrific and I and with this cell phone camera I really think that there's a day coming um, when I'm gonna have somebody that's at my bait that shouldn't be there and I'm gonna get a picture of them and uh, hopefully I'll have time to get out there and confront them if they're you know stealing stuff or messing with my baits or whatever so there I, I do know of a couple situations where um, people have caught trespassers with these and they they got text called law enforcement and were able to arrest the trespassers so um, thanks for watching this and please leave a comment below if you really uh, have some tips or pointers if there's anything that I missed that you think should be added to it uh, I'd love to hear your comments or your experiences if any of you have had 
um, experiences with trespassers or people messing with your bait or whatever that's the that's the kind of thing I really like to hear about too so uh, once again if you're not a subscriber please do so lots more bear hunting videos coming we'll see you on the next one